the Syrian Arab Army Titans will control an Al Hajjara village in Damascus countryside. Fifty citizens are killed or wounded in new terrorist explosions in Iraq. Kerry says imposing new sanctions on Iran will be wrong. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our news for today. Syrian Arab army units have tightened control and Hajera village in Damascus suburbs after eliminating the last terrorist gatherings and destroying their weapons and ammunition. Chasing terrorists in the outskirts of Hajera, an army unit foiled an attempt by a terrorist group to infiltrate into the village. An army unit also targeted a sniper inside a building there. Two people were killed and 20 others injured by motor shells which targeted Baptuma and Azoblatani areas in Damascus. Damascus police sources said that two citizens were killed and seven others injured when terrorists launched two motor shells on Baptuma Square. The source added that terrorists also launched a motor shell on Sukilhal in Azoblatani area wounding 13 and causing heavy material damages to nearby commercial shops. Pope Francis of the Vatican condemned the terrorist attack on a vehicle carrying school children in Bab Sharki area, which killed four children along with the driver, pointing out that such a tragedy must not be repeated. A la cara popolazione siriana. The Syrian Arab army, meanwhile, continues to pursue terrorists in Berze, destroying their hideouts and achieving new successes. Berze, northeast of Damascus, had been a place for the crimes of the terrorists who had been sniping citizens and shelling neighboring areas with their motor shells. The army, however, has been able to carry out well-planned operations near the Syrian Education Satellite Channel, the printer's neighborhood, Tishreen Hospital, and the area stretching to al Qabun province. The terrorists had trapped the houses to block the way of the army. Their snipers took positions in high buildings to be able to target the advancing Syrian Arab army forces, yet their schemes were doomed to failure. They were defeated, so they have started to withdraw. In no time, Berze will have recovered its security and will have got rid of terrorism once and for all. Nine citizens were killed and others were injured today when motor shells fired by terrorists fell on Al Ghuta and Al Hamra neighborhoods as well as Barazil Street near Al Nakhla Square in Al Inshaat district in the city of Homs. In home suburbs, the Syrian Arab army has killed all the members of a terrorist group during their attempt to sneak from al ghasibiyah into al dwar village. The army has also eliminated a terrorist group that was trying to transfer weapons and ammunition from Arrestan to terrorists in al hawleh An army unit has meanwhile destroyed terrorists' hideouts in Adar al-Kabira, Ghanto and al qunaitirat as well as in the area between Humayis and Mheen villages, killing and injuring a number of terrorists, among whom Hadi Muhammad Adnan Qabalan, a most dangerous terrorist, Wissam al-Masri, Ahmad Zahida, and Ahmad Hindiye were identified. 
In cooperation with the inhabitants, the Syrian Arab army has clamped down on terrorists in Zahrat al-Asir in Hama suburbs, eliminating a number of them and capturing others. A stolen car and weapons were confiscated. Explosive devices weighing between 30 and 90 kilograms planted by terrorists on the outskirts of the village were dismantled. An armed terrorist group has assassinated the two women they had kidnapped last Friday when they attacked some farmers working in an olives field in Khnefis village in Assalamiya countryside in Hama Governorate. A police source in Hama said the bodies of the two women were found in Az al Din crossing on Assalamiya Homs Road. The death of the two women, according to the coroner's report, was the result of bullets fired in the head. It is to be noted that eight citizens had been killed and others wounded in the attack during which the two women were kidnapped last Friday. In Aleppo and in support of the victories achieved by the Syrian Arab army in defeating the terrorists, residents of Jibreen village took out to the streets in a huge march that proceeded into all the squares of the village. Minister of Electricity Imad Khamis and Branch Secretary of Ba'ath Arab Socialist Party Ahmed Saleh Ibrahim as well as Governor of Aleppo Mohammed Wahid Aqad took part in the march. Participants in the march asserted their full confidence in the ability of the Syrian Arab army to defeat defeat terrorists and those who took part in the war on Syria, expressing their readiness to sacrifice for their country. Minister Khamis referred to the steadfastness of the people in Aleppo against the enemies of Syria, asserting the government's keenness to provide all the needs of the people, pointing out that the maintenance workshops will rehabilitate the electricity network as soon as possible. The Russian Foreign Ministry strongly condemned the terrorist attacks against Syrian civilians inside the residential areas. The Russian Foreign Ministry stressed that the extremists are trying to hinder preparations for the Geneva II conference by targeting populated areas inhabited particularly by Christian citizens, calling on those countries which support the terrorists to help end the violence in Syria. Welcome back. In Iraq, eight people, including two children, were killed today and 35 others were injured in three terrorist blasts that targeted pilgrims east of the country. Iraqi police said that three bombs went off simultaneously near a group of people who were in Baquba. Iraqi security sources had announced earlier that two people were killed, including a traffic officer and eight others injured in several terrorist attacks yesterday. Finally, facing the U.S. Congress attempts to impose new sanctions on Iran, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry said that any new sanctions on Iran would be a mistake at a time when negotiations with Tehran are going on over its nuclear program. Spokeswoman for the U.S. State Department, Jen Psaki, explained that Kerry, as a Senate, had many times voted with imposing the sanctions on Iran, yet any vote now would be in contrast with diplomacy. Psaki said that Kerry will convey a message that the Americans prefer a peaceful solution for Iran's nuclear issue. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Vani Gunjan, but after a short break. Good afternoon. The Minister of Domestic Trade issued decisions for setting the profit limit of producing and importing various goods like foodstuff, medicines and industrial materials. On the other hand, the Minister declared that all importers should present the importing costs to the Domestic Trade Directorate in order to price the imported materials and provide them to the local markets. The Minister of Industry asserted that it discussed the offer presented by the engineering Chinese company for developing the wheels factory in Hama. The offer includes producing about 1 million 
of wheels annually as the general establishment of chemical industry affirmed that the offer will develop the company's production to be competitive with high quality according to the international standards. Sources at the Damascus Securities Exchange affirmed that its index rose during today's session by 2.5 points, as the trading value will be stable until the end of this year. They also pointed out that this stability will attract new investments in the DSE. Furthermore, the trading value of yesterday's session reached about 7.5 million Syrian pounds, with a total bulk of 46,000 shares distributed on 41 deals. U.S. crude oil swung between gains and losses after closing at the lowest price in more than five months. Before data, that's forecast to show U.S. crude inventories rising to the highest level since June. Futures were little changed after falling 2.2 percent yesterday. Brent for December settlement, which expires tomorrow, gained 48 cents to reach $106 a barrel. European stocks retreated as investors weighed corporate earnings and awaited data that may show euro area industrial output fell. Japanese shares fell snapping a two-day rally as investors weighed corporate earnings and shipping companies. The Jewelers Assembly set the price of the 21 karat gold at 5,900 Syrian pounds per gram, rising 400 Syrian pounds since yesterday. While the Rashadi Golden Coin was set at 43,000 Syrian pounds, and the English coin was set at 48,700 Syrian pounds. The euro fell for the first time in four days versus the yen. Before data, analysts said it will show the region's factory output dropped and growth slowed, spurring bets that the European Central Bank may take more action to boost growth. With this we conclude our news. Thank you for watching and goodbye.